The Yellow River in central China owes its name to the large quantities of sediment it carries, which can amount to 950 kilos per cubic meter. This fine silt is deposited on the downstream plain at an annual rate of 10 centimeters, which necessitates the construction of higher dikes every year. But this doesn't stop the Yellow River from being the deadliest waterway in the world. Several times, rising flood waters have left hundreds of thousands of people dead. To prevent further catastrophes, the Chinese government decided to build a dam as far downstream as possible and chose to locate it at the Xiaolong Di site as the valley widens to four kilometers just downstream of Xiaolong Di. At Xiaolong Di itself, the Yellow River's upstream catchment area stretches over some 700,000 square kilometers, an area larger than France. The river's average annual flow rate is 1,340 cubic meters per second, but this figure can be multiplied by 20 during exceptional floods. To contain and regulate a river like this, an extraordinary project was needed. The Xiaolong Di Dam is one of the world's largest rock-filled dams in terms of its dimensions and volume. The dam will fulfill several purposes, control the water levels, reduce sedimentation, improve the irrigation, and produce electricity. Its total cost is estimated at 2.6 billion American dollars, a third of which is financed by the World Bank. The project includes three groups of structures. A 154 meter high rock-filled dam with a crest length of 1,300 meters and a volume of 58 million cubic meters. The water intake structure, 112 meters high and 278 meters wide, with a volume of 1 million cubic meters of concrete. This structure incorporates the mouths of 16 tunnels, derivation tunnels, free flow tunnels, sediment tunnels, an irrigation tunnel, and power tunnels for the underground powerhouse. Construction of these two structures was awarded to Chinese, German, and Italian joint ventures. Lot 3 include the underground powerhouse and its associated structures, six circular power tunnels, the underground powerhouse, the transformer chamber, the draft tube gate chamber, numerous access and drainage tunnels and shafts, the three tail race tunnels extended by outside structures. This lot was awarded to the Dumez GTM Philip Holtzman Bureau 6 joint venture led by Dumez GTM. The three contracts were signed in spring 1994 and the works had to be completed in six years. Before the construction companies arrived, the project's owner had considerably developed the site, building a bridge over the river, connecting water and electricity supplies and laying down a suitable road network. Each joint venture built a base camp for expatriate staff and housing for the Chinese staff and workforce. The Log 3 expatriate base camp provided housing for some 35 families and 50 singles. The Log 3 site installations include buildings, hangars and specially equipped areas for the establishment of the site offices, the laboratory, the maintenance workshops, the warehouses, the plant to manufacture the penstock steel lining sections, and two concrete mixing plants with a capacity of 60 to 80 cubic meters per hour. Underground excavations were entirely carried out with Chinese explosives products, except in some cases for the detonators. Loading was performed using Broit electric power shovels, Caterpillar wheel loaders and hydraulic excavators. Mucking out equipment included 30-ton Komatsu dumpers and Kiruna articulated dumpers. As sandstone beds tend to form contours with fault lines, the exposed rock surface was systematically scaled down using hydraulic excavators fitted with pickaxes or rock breakers. 
Then the rock mass was bolted with bolts set in cement and resin. Wet shotcrete was then applied using robots. The cycle continued with drilling operations and charging the boreholes with dynamite. Internal rock faces were drilled using three-arm jumbos. Five of these machines were used simultaneously, as well as two two-arm jumbos and one one-arm jumbo. The benches of the powerhouse, both the transformer and draft tube gate chamber, and the tail race tunnels were excavated using hydraulic drill rigs. To reach the program targets, we had to execute a volume of excavation of 15,000 cubic meters of rock per week. And by the end of 1997, most of the underground excavation works were completed. To supply water to the turbines in the powerhouse, we excavated six power tunnels, 10 meters in diameter and 380 meters long. The first section, 180 meters long, is the head race tunnel, lined with reinforced concrete. Circular reinforcement was welded in compliance with Chinese standards. The second section is the inclined power tunnel with a 55 meter drop angled at 50 degrees to the horizontal. The penstocks were reinforced with steel lining and started about 50 meters upstream of the inclined power tunnel and extended about 50 meters downstream from the inclined power tunnel until they reached the powerhouse. The penstock steel lining sections were manufactured in our on-site plant then transported by truck. So as not to disturb the work in progress on the power tunnels, we excavated one additional tunnel to transport the steel sections to the top of the inclined power tunnels. The sections were lifted, placed on the rails, then lowered into the inclined power tunnel to their final position by a jack, adjusted and welded together. Over a two-year period, 430 steel sections were put in place in this manner, with a total weight of 6,575 tons. The underground powerhouse is the principal structure of Lot 3. This immense cavern is 252 meters long, 26 meters wide and 61 meters high. The Arch of Triumph in Paris could fit inside six times over. At the beginning of the construction work and taking into account the rock condition, the designer decided to consolidate the vault by installing post-tensioned tendons of 150 tons capacity and 25 meters long. The tendons were manufactured on-site in our workshops. As the installation of these 330 tendons had not been initially foreseen, installing them has considerably delayed the construction of the powerhouse. But we were later able to make up for the delay.
all the powerhouse's internal rock faces were systematically bolted. 20 centimeters of shot creep were applied to the walls and 30 centimeters to the vault. supporting the rail carriage of the travelling bridge cranes were stabilised by pre-stressed anchor bars of 50 tonnes capacity. This type of anchor was also used in some specific areas along the walls of the powerhouse, where the claystone layers were particularly important. Once completed, the two-thirds of the powerhouse's height is occupied by the generating sets, turbines and their reinforced concrete draft tubes. The Six Francis turbines will have a power capacity of 1800 megawatts. Several annexes were also built. The two main access tunnels to the powerhouse, three main drainage tunnels, two of them surrounding the whole of the underground chambers, a series of ventilation shafts and a lift shaft, two cable tunnels for the high voltage cables from the transformer chamber. Additional access tunnels were built by the joint venture to facilitate the construction of the various structures in this vast underground complex. As the various phases of construction always depend on access, building more access tunnels is sometimes necessary to optimize the use of resources. This also enabled us to make up for the delay caused by the installation of the additional tendons in the powerhouse vault. The two transformers and draft tube gates chambers are located parallel to the powerhouse's axis. The transformer chamber will house high voltage transformers. Six link tunnels to the powerhouse provide passageways for the bus bars. The draft tube gates chamber will house the gantry crane used to maneuver the downstream gates which protect the turbines. Water will return to the river through the tail race tunnels. The six turbines push the water into the draft tubes, which have a constant inner width of 10.5 meters, their height increasing from 6.2 meters to 10.5 meters. These six tunnels are then grouped together into three tail race tunnels. The tunnels are about 900 meters long, with an internal section of 12 meters wide and 18 meters high. The concrete lining of these tunnels was performed using metallic formworks, which were designed in Europe and manufactured in China. The formworks were moved with self-propelling travelers. The tunnels are lined with 35 centimeter thick concrete for the main part and two meter thick concrete at their extremities. Concreting operation took 
two and a half years at a sustained pace. During the peak period of concreting, we poured 1,000 cubic meters of concrete per day. The three tail race tunnels are also concrete lined up to the downstream draft tube gates, which allows each tail race tunnel to be isolated and drained separately. In October 1997, the course of the Yellow River was changed for the first time in its history. This moving event took place witnessed by the region's inhabitants and attended by numerous officials, including Mr. Li Peng, who also took the opportunity to visit the underground powerhouse. After the main construction works had been completed, the first turbine was switched on at the end of 1999, seven months ahead of contractual deadline. Final completion of all the construction work is scheduled for the end of 2001. <laughs> 